shifting shadows of the earth, we will lift our eyes to him. With steady arms of mercy reach to gather children in. Rejoice, rejoice, let every tongue rejoice. One heart, one voice, O Church of Christ, rejoice. Greetings and welcome from the Austinville Anglican community where we're broadcasting from the beautiful Church of St. Barnes. This morning we acknowledge and pay respect to the traditional custodians on the land on which we worship, work and knit, the Bundjalung people. We recognise the significant role of the past and future that the elders play in the life of the region. We are mindful that within and without the beautiful sandstone church, the land always was and always will be Bundjalung land. Today is the seventh Sunday of Easter, and our sentence of the day is, Go and make disciples of all nations, Jesus commands. I am with you always to the close of the day and of the age. And that was from Matthew. See what a morning gloriously bright with the dawning of hope in Jerusalem, folded the grave clothes, tomb filled with light, as the angel announced, Christ is risen. See God's salvation plan, wrought in love, born in pain, paid in sacrifice. Fulfilled with Christ the man, for he lives, Christ is risen from the dead. See Mary weeping, where is he laid as the sorrow she turns from the a voice speaking, calling her name. It's the Master, the Lord, raised to life again. The voice that spans the hills, seeking life, stirring hope, paid in peace to us, will sound when he appears, for he lives Christ is risen from the dead. One with the Father, ancient of days, through the Spirit who clothes faith with certainty. Honor and blessing, glory and praise to the King, crowned with power and authority. And we are raised with him, dead is dead, life has won, Christ has conquered. And we shall reign with him, for he lives, Christ is risen from the dead. The prayer of the day. God of majesty, you led the Messiah through suffering into risen life and took him up into the glory of heaven. Clothe us with the power promised from on high and send us forth to the ends of the earth as heralds of repentance and witnesses of Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead, who lives with you now and always in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Today's Gospel is from John, chapter 17, verses 1 to 11. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. 
Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept their word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and knowing truth, that I come from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. On Friday, Lynette Roberts was laid to rest. Those of us who knew Lynette respected her for her sense of humour, and we regarded her highly for her community consciousness. Lynette drew into her inner circle not only her close family, her extended family, or anyone who was in need, she seemed to adopt everyone as part of her inner circle. On one occasion, I drove with her to Brunswick Heads to offer some support to a community under the bridge who were going through difficulty. And Lynette Roberts seemed to know absolutely everybody her community consciousness reminds me of something from Africa. The Ubuntu philosophy says that a person becomes a person through others. Ubuntu defines the essence of humanity in its relationship to others. Ubuntu says, I am who I am because you are who you are. Ultimately, Ubuntu describes the absolute necessity of our interconnectedness with each other and the universe. As we reflect on the COVID pandemic in which we find ourselves, this experience has brought home for each of us how dependent we are on each other. It is true what Ubuntu says, we become fully human in our relationship with others. With COVID, if one person is sick, literally everybody is sick. An illness for one means an illness for many. And this is what Ubuntu tries to make clear for us. Ubuntu offers a healing moment against the West's rabid individualism. As we step into the Gospel according to John, in chapter 17, Jesus has completed his dialogue and conversation with his disciples, and he steps apart to now pray for his friends. And in his prayer, he prays, may they be one as you and I are one. This is another way to define Ubuntu, May we be one as God is one. Jesus has Ubuntu with God, source of all being, and the Holy Spirit. Each person of the Trinity lives for the other. And through the Spirit, the Spirit of love that is inside each of us, we can share in the Ubuntu that Jesus has with the Trinity. 
inside each of us, hidden beneath all the layers of our identity is this impulse to love. And this impulse to love is the truest part of who we are. And it's our birthright as human beings. And so in every moment that we truly connect with another, in any moment that we truly and authentically love another or receive love from another, we are in that moment loving God. We are in that moment experiencing Ubuntu. Ubuntu at its best is a particular type of community based on loving relationships. At its best, Ubuntu becomes a nest which allows the flourishing of each individual who is part of the Ubuntu. Ubuntu is never meant to be a cage to stifle our humanity. So, Jesus prays, may they be one as you and I are one. Jesus also prays, all that you have given me, I have given to you. And so there's this free flowing of self-emptying love, which describes the inner love life of the Trinity. And in moments where we love each other in a similar fashion, in this self-emptying way, we are at that moment living the dream of Jesus. These final words of Jesus reminds me of a scene in the series Sons of Anarchy. And I'd like to end with this blessing. In Sons of Anarchy, Maggie Sylph in character is holding her son and she believes that she is soon to die. And as she holds her son, she prays this blessing over her son. And the blessing is so similar to the Gospel of John, where John prays a blessing on each of us, his friends who follow in his footsteps. And so Maggie Sylph holds her son and she says, may your dreams give you peace. May the light lead you home and may you stay in the arms of the angels. And I see in her last words parallels with the Gospel of John chapter 17, where Jesus prays a blessing on us that we would find our fullest expression in our loving relationships with others. And that we would understand that in every moment of loving another, we are at that moment loving God, for it is God who is loving through us. It is God who is loving from us. And when we receive love from others in return, it is God embracing us with God's unending circle of love. May your dreams bring you peace in the darkness. May you always rise over the rain. May the light from above always lead you to love. May you stay in the arms of the angels. May you always be brave in the shadows till the sun shines upon you again. Hear this prayer in my heart and we'll never be apart. May you stay in the arms of the angels. May you hear every song in the forest. And if ever you lose your own way, hear my voice like a breeze, whisper soft through the trees. May you stay in the arms of the angels. Sisters and brothers in Christ, God invites us to bring our doubts and fears, our joys and concerns, our petitions and praise, and offer them for the earth and all its creatures. Receive these prayers, O God, and transform us through them that we may have eyes to see and hearts to understand not only what you do on our behalf, but what you call us to do. 
so that your realm will come to fruition in glory. Amen. Filled with the Spirit's power, with one accord, the infant church confess its risen Lord. O Holy Spirit, in your church today, no less your power of fellowship. Now with the mind of Christ set us on fire, that unity may be our great desire. Give joy and peace, give faith to hear your call, and readiness in each to work for Widen our love, good spirit, to embrace in your strong care all those of every race. Like wind and fire, with life among us move, till we are known as Christ's and Christians. 